So we're going to be speaking about a topic that I personally do not hear much about in the dietetic community. So if you have any information which you would like to add, please go ahead and don't hesitate to do so. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. As you know by now, I am a dietetic practitioner. I am a certified diabetes educator and a certified nutrition support clinician. Welcome back to my channel. So the other day I was at work and I was encountered with a transgender patient. So today in this video, after the research that I have done, I am going to be discussing certain things that the dietetic practitioner needs to be aware of when speaking to this specific population. So there's a large percentage of Americans that identify as transgender. And I'm pretty sure at some point in the dietetic practitioner's professional career, we are going to have to serve this population. So the first topic that I wanted to speak about was weight gain. So with hormone replacement therapy, there's a number of things that can occur. You can have the cessation of menzies, body fat redistribution, and an increase or decrease in muscle mass. So specifically for individuals taking hormone replacement therapy to go from a female to male, there's a few things that the dietetic practitioner needs to be aware. Number one, weight gain. Number two, there can be an increase in LDL levels. And number three, there can be a decrease in HDL levels. So when providing nutrition counseling, these are some factors to really hone in and focus on. Additionally, the World Professional Association of Transgender Health states that individuals transitioning from a female to male may also put themselves at an increased risk for hypertension as well as diabetes. So these are things that the dietetic practitioner needs to be aware of when providing nutrition counseling. So let's look at individuals which are transitioning from males to females. So the again, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health states that these individuals may be at risk for hypertriglyceridemia, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, and also possibly osteoporosis. So the way that the dietetic practitioner gets themselves involved, specifically with weight control, is by lifestyle and dietary factors, which we all know in the profession. But something that I did want to point out is it's not as simple as it looks. Um, I highly recommend that there is a collaborative or interdisciplinary effort because there may be other factors, other social, other mental factors that the dietetic practitioner needs to combat and work in collaboration with a professional specifically in those disciplines to intervene with the lifestyle and dietary factors. So the next thing that I wanted to look at is chronic diseases. So what about for the transgender population, if you have a patient that has cardiovascular disease or type 2 diabetes or COPD or any type of lung disease, HIV even. Nutrition counseling is a must because these conditions don't just disappear. The hormone replacement therapy may aggravate some of these issues. So for the dietetic practitioner to take an aggressive approach may be warranted. The last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is something that directly impacted me, is for an inpatient hospital setting. What equation do you use to calculate estimated calorie needs? Like, is it going to be the Mifflin St. George? Is it going to be the Harris Benedict? Which we all know as dietetic practitioners, there is a formula for the male and female populations. So this is what I actually uh, recommend. And I also went on the evidence-based library for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and they are currently in the process of building the information that dietitians need to use for the transgender population. But my recommendation is to use gen a gender neutral equation. For instance, the 20 to 25 kcal per kilogram body weight, or the 25 to 30 kcal per kilogram body weight, depending on what your calorie goal is 
with that patient. The second thing that is recommended, and this is actually a recommendation from a dietitian that is a little more seasoned than myself, so you guys can either choose to take it or leave it, but she recommended for individuals that are going through hormone replacement therapy that there is some type of blood draw to see does the patient have more estrogen or do they have more testosterone? And if they have more estrogen than testosterone, then you treat that population like a female, but if they have the inverse, more testosterone than estrogen, then you treat that population like a male. So I found that to be very insightful as well. So these are the current things that the dietetic practitioner needs to be aware of when dealing with the transgender population. And I'm pretty sure more science specific to the field of nutrition and dietetics is going to come out with clear cut concise um, scientific recommendations. Thank you for watching. As usual, remember to comment, subscribe, like, and share this video. And have a good day. Bye-bye.